Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will start the very important topic of Arab. But in from this grammar book, last time I gave you homework. So what will you do? You will go to Google Classroom. I am telling you how to join the class, how to join this new class. So the name of this new class is Lisan al Quran. So in order to join the class, you need this code. So first you will copy this code, or you can also copy the. I have I have sent you this code in the WhatsApp group, or you can also the invite link here. So in case you have the link, you can just paste the link on your browser and open it it will allow you to join the class directly or if you copy the code that i have just shown you here this code in case you copy it then again you will open google classroom like this you will click on this plus icon you will find this icon in your browser or you can also find it in your mobile phone application Click on it, click on join class, type the code, then click on join and you will be able to join the class like this. So once you have joined the class, click on classwork and here you will see list of pending homework that you have not done yet. So here you see the question is written here. You, you can write the answer of this question on your PDF. You can write the answer on your notebook or you can write answer anywhere you want. Then you have two pages as well here. So if you have the printed book, you, will, you can write the answer on your printed book. You can write the answer on PDF or you can write on your notebook, wherever you want. After writing all the answers, you will click on this add or create button if you have done the right if you have written the answers in pdf you will upload the pdf through this option file option and if you have written it on your notebook or other things then you will take a pictures and upload the pictures through this file option in this way you can submit the homework number one okay if anyone has any doubt, they can ask me. No doubt, so we'll continue our work. fourth lesson. So here you will learn about the Arab. Look at this verb. It has many vowels like Dhamma, Fatta, Kasra. And, and then we have the mean. Look at this word. This word also has Fatta, Kasra, Fatta. So the vowel on the word are called Arakat or Ashkar. And the last vowel of the word is called Arab. Remember this point. Like, look at this word Al Kitabu Al Kitabu. So, here you see here a vowel, here a vowel, here we have a vowel. The vowel on the word Al Kal Harakat. They are also known as Ashkal. Okay. So vowel on the word Alkal, Harkat, or Ashkal. But this last vowel is called Arab. Arab. Remember the difference between Harkat and Arab. 
the vowels on the word are called harakat and the last vowel is called arab then harakat never change harakat never change but arab changes according to the sentence okay remember harakat never change but arab changes according to the sentence so this word you see it has al kitabu but in some sentences it will have al kitabi in some sentences it will have al kitaba so arab changes according to the sentence but harakat never change remember the difference this fata this this fata this fata this kasra will always remain like this but the arab sometime it will be dhamma sometime it will be fata sometime it will be kasa it changes according to the sentence okay any doubt any question so same thing they will tell you here in detail and i don't think there is any other point that i have missed yes no other point yes they will tell you the name of the arab also okay so who is first student faz adana assalam alaikum wa alaikum assalam uh, in terms of declaration the three cases in arab alif allah wa qala kullu shay khaliku khaliku kullu shay الطالب مجتهد الطالب مجتهد this one number 2 after first read this one the alif hello yes a budullah ha أعبد الله إلى الله المصير باع الطالب مجتهد قبلت الطالبة نظرت إلى الطالب جيم الكتاب مفيد قراءة الكتاب قرأت الكتاب قرأت الكتاب قرأت قرأت الكتاب بحثت عن الكتاب بحثت عن الكتاب بحثت عن كتابي عن ال عن كتابي now i want everyone of you to note one thing Allah has dhamma here Allah has fatta here Allah has kasra here Talib has dhamma here fatta kasra Arab is changing Kitabu kitaba kitabi Arab is changing according to the sentence but harakat are not changing here it has fatta here it has fatta harakat are not changing fatta kasra fatta kasra you see harakat are not changing but Arab is changing according to the sentence. Okay, for the time, I continue. Explanatory notes. Examine the Quranic verse in in column alif closely. The defined name of Allah is mentioned in three sentences. In sentences one, the last letter ha of Allah carries. A dome, forward sign, you. 
in the synthesis to the ha carries fat ha. The, fo the forward sign a forward and sign in fat ha. Fat ha. And in the synthesis three, it carries castro. The forward sign I. Castro. Castro now. The new, the uh, now consider column B, the word talibu is used in three sentences. In sentences one, the final letter ba of this word carry a doma, you. Dhamma. In sentences, this you are doma, 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 you. In sentences two. Is carry fat ha a oh. and in a or a fat ha a and represent fat ha in its pronunciation is a. This u represent the ma in its pronunciation is u. This i represent kasra in its pronunciation is e. E okay. And in the set of three, is carries kasro i. E. An introduction to declension. Similarly, in column G, the final letter bar of the word al kitabu carries a different forward sign in all the three sentences in the above mentioned order. Thus, it becomes clear that the forward sign on the final letter of a vowel keeps changing according to the grammatic function of the words in the synthesis. This changing of the vowel on the final letter of a word in a statement is known as a rub declaration. Yes. So all you, do, you all need to remember this thing that final vowel Changes according to the sentence, and this change is called a rub declension. We have a footnote here. Let's see what we have. Read this. And, and now the student. Do you see my cursor? The student. The student should be able to distinguish this one. I think, okay, Mr. Jibril Slaudin, read the footnote. Yeah, so I'm going to love. The student should be able to distinguish clearly between Arab and Ashkal. In the sentence, Hada Kitabun, the Kestra, E. Under the curve and the father are on ta are known as ashkal, whereas the dhamma u carry the last letter b is irab. So, what is ashkal? What is irab? Ashkal are the are the harakat that never changes. Yeah. The Europe are the ones that, that has a declension that keeps changing. Mm. And Arab is the always at the end of the word, okay? The last yes, word, sir. end of the word. The last word. Okay. So now read this. Mr. Jubilee. Yes, sir. Read this. Now, there are only three cases found of a noun. These have appeared in the above example. There is no fourth form. The three cases forms are as follows. Nominative. al faro al rafo al rafo al rafo In the first case, which is indicated by a dhamma, u, on the final letter, 
the word is term marfu accusative and nasbu. And the second case, which is indicated by a fata a, a on the final letter, the word is term mansub. Genetic, genetic case, al -jorru. In the third case, which is indicated by a kesra, E, on the final letter, the word is term majroor. So any word which will have the ma, you will call it marfu word, and its state is called rafa. Any word which has fatta, you will call it mansub isam, and its state is called nasab state. And any word which has kasra, you will call it majroor word, and the state is jar. Continue. Yes, sir. A noun may occur in the nominative case one, due to various reasons. Sir, hence the word Allah in the first verse is marfu, that is the nominative case. And in the second verse, it is mansub in the accusative case. And in the third verse, it is majroor. In the genitive case, these three technical terms should be borne in mind. Yes, you all need to rem remember these three words marfu, mansub, and majroor. Okay, so next student is Ms. Rahma. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. The noun may occur in normative case due to various reasons. Similarly, there are different reasons for it appearing in the accusative or in the genitive case. This will be the details dealt with detail later. Inshallah, the knowledge of the different condition under which a word, a statement may occur in the nominative, accusative, or genitive case in Tamid, Ilmun Nahaw, or Ilmul Irob. So, whatever we have learned in this chapter will be repeated here for revision. So, read this. We learn, we learn that the last letter can, can change any time. First read from this. Nah? Read this, the case of a word. Okay. The case of a word keeps changing with relation to, to its grammatically function in a sentence. This changing of case is referred to as this dissertation in robe, it now may appear in any of the three cases. One, nominative rough, rough, rough. two, accusative, 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 in an three, genitive, and jaru. Okay. <clears throat> now, if anyone has any question, they can ask me. <laughs> Just hold for a minute, okay? Give me a minute, I will be back. By the end.
السلام علیکم وعلیکم السلام ورحمت اللہ We will take uh, seven minutes break. So after seven minutes, okay, sir. inshallah we'll continue, okay? Ma'asalaam. Inshallah.